Just a quick word or two before you think about doing this. What I'm doing here is something that probably, I don't know, maybe it's Tomat wouldn't recommend. Um, one of the things that you need to watch out for, of course, is that if you've got an automatic oiler fitted to the machine which this has, if you've got the spindle locked out, which I have for safety reasons with the spindle clamp on, the, the, there's no lubricant getting to the slides. However, for a short run that I've got, I've got 12 of these plates to make. What I have done is, in between times, started the, the, the spindle up, taking the lock off, start the spindle up, just to get the lube oil to pump into the slides and so on. I suppose you can always put some lubricant on the slides. Also, another thing to watch for is that you can't take heavy cuts. It's not designed to cut like a shaper. It hasn't got really any power to it other than the weight of the head. It's heavy enough to cut, fairly light cut. The cut I've got on at the moment is 5 thou, but that is not all the way around the foam tooth. And once you start full engagement of the tooth, or full engagement of the foam tool, in other words the whole front, the whole cutting edge of the foam tool, it represents quite a large force required to shear off a few thousandths of an inch of metal. And that will stall the machine if you take more than, I would say, two thou, uh, possibly three thou. Any more than that you'll just stall it in the z-axis and all that will happen is that you'll have to reset the z and then go back up and pick up where you left off. So keep the cuts low. It's, a, it's, a, it's an arduous uh, process. I probably could speed it up, as I say, if I could figure out how to do a sub-program or whatever. But never mind, it's served a purpose for me and it's working, so that's all that counts as far as I'm concerned. Okay, what you're looking at here is phase two of the clutch plate job that I'm doing for an Alfa Romeo car, 1920s. I just use conversational programming to drill these four tapped holes here, here, here and here, 90 degrees apart. And these two are the mounting holes that will place this fixture on the rotary table. Just two slots should be enough to hold it in position. There's a spigot on the bottom of here that locates in the centre of the rotary table, so that gets me on centre. And the idea is we put these in here. Now, these plates, you can see there's a bit of play here because they're all slightly different, so it's had to be machined to the largest one. I'll put some paper around here, here, and here so it centralises it. And the idea will be to place four bolts or four captive screws, almond screws. It's very hard to hold a camera and do things at the same time. <laughs> Just one moment. Yeah, there you go. And you can see there the four bolts are in position. And if you can see that you can move things quite easily, but if you tighten up one, even just one, uh, nip it up, it really does take a good hold on them. You can see there. Well, you could see that was obviously clamping because it lifted that one up. But they're all, it is about 20 thou thicker than the recess. And there you see, the, the idea is we line this up with a cutter. The cutter is mounted in the spindle. The spindle locks on and I'll tell the cutter to come up and down. It's a form shape and I'll make a couple of passes with about a thou cut and rotate it. And we'll get one to fit and once I'm happy it looks all right then we'll proceed with it. Okay well tonight I've been doing a little bit of g-code for uh, for doing these plates which I'm sure I've probably already shown you but just in case I haven't these uh, the tooth form isn't quite right so I've made up I made up a form cutter and I'm going to use the machine as a shaper so basically very simple program I've told it tool number 38 G4054 I've told it to go to X Y 
A and Z zero. So that'll be the first thing. And then I've told it, right, I want it to go at a feed rate of 36 inches a minute to a Z minus 0.35. So that's the first downstroke. Sorry, I'm trying to read and not point the camera. So here we go. So there we go. There's, there's my zeros. There's the feed, the depth of Z uh, in the down direction. Um, then I want the tool to retract by 0 0.002 though, so that when it comes back up to zero it doesn't rub the work. So there we go, there's a zero, zero, 002, there's a zero. It comes back up to zero and X is zero, 002. So that's it back to the start position and I've told it to go down again. So that's two passes before yeah, it goes down again and then it returns back up to Z0, X0 and then I index it 10.588 etc degrees because there are 34 teeth on these uh, splines so that's, the, that's how many degrees it is and off we go again and really the program is so simple because up to this line here from where am I from from here to here it's repetitive so then you can go on and you just got to add 10 point odd degrees each time to it and until you get round to 350 odd degrees which is the final sort of step and that's it so anyway having written it I'll give it a quick try just to test it out and really it, it seems to work okay. I'll show you it. Uh, the tooling's not set up but you'll get the idea. Here we go, there's the rotary table ind indexing itself round to zero. And wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Here comes the head. Any second now. There we go. One, two passes. One two passes two passes so two passes at the same setting and uh, next thing will be to try and figure out how I can do that as a repeat cycle if I can't all I'll do is I know it's cutting two though because it's going around well I believe it goes around twice I'm not sure but although no it doesn't because I haven't got that far yet but I could even just say, right, let's advance it on the X, or, or yeah, on the X plane by one thou, and then reset my zero, and start from there. But that's that's the program. Very successful. Didn't take long, maybe half an hour at most. I played around with the speeds, which took some time, but I'm happy. So next thing will be to give it a try once I once I get it so as I can control it a bit better. Well here you can see the setup we have for turning the Tomac mill into a shaper. This is a spindle lock which I made. This clamps to the outer barrel, this clamps to the rotating spindle itself. I've got a tool holder and an ER25 tool holder with a parallel shank and this is the form cutter. This is uh, the spline shaft that these fit onto and well we'll give it a try it's it's these teeth just don't quite fit there's quite a bit of eccentricity in some of these so i'm starting a long way off i might it might take me a while to find out just how good it's going to work well there we see it working uh, i don't think it's cutting anything yet but i'll keep moving it in advancing it after each cycle one full turn i'm just checking the program out to make sure it does actually do the 34 slots I think, I'm, I think it will do the 30, 34. Oh, it is cutting a little bit there. I can see you cutting on one of the teeth, unless it's a piece that's been left there yet. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm now on to my third cut, and it's definitely working. I had one huge cut which just showed me that something wasn't quite right there. Not with the program, but with the actual material or the, the former cutting of these. Now you can see there, it's just a little bit of a bright spot on the edge of the teeth. And I'll keep going. What I'm doing is every time I come to the end of the cycle, 
I'm resetting my X axis to zero. I'm moving the X axis one thou a lot. Well, like I was trying to say before, so rudely interrupted, at the end of each cycle I'll move the table along in the x-axis by one throw and then reset the zero. I'll demonstrate it now, we're nearly at the end of this cycle. So here we come when that line there gets to it, we're almost finished. That's it finished, so... Let's go on demonstrate here we are in the X so I'll hit the jog controller X and I move it forward oh, one thou and then I hit enter and that's reset it one thou further along and then I can hit cycle start again and that'll go back to zero and start again. I've never done it this way. I'll normally lift it up in a Z plane. There we go. Yeah, and away we go again. So hopefully, I'll give it a while and you know, it's only a thousandth of an inch at a time, but this is it's fairly close. Anyway, we'll uh, see how it goes. We're pretty much there with this one. It's cleaning up the teeth profiles really nicely. You can see the cuttings there underneath. It's only a thousandth of an inch I'm putting on at a time. Uh, it's got a re and it's doing two passes at a thousandth of an inch. But sometimes you can hear it squeaking on the second pass, which indicates to me that it's it's taken a thou cut quite easily on the first pass and not leaving much to cut at all on the second, which is good. So I keep trying the, the centre in and we're not far off now, maybe another five times around. I don't know. We just keep trying it, but it's going really well, I'm quite pleased with it. I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close to finishing these now. I've just tried the clutch center in here, and it's it's a bit of a tight push fit. So I'm taking one thou more cut off. That's taking a lot more than I thought. You can see in the corners there. There's a lot of cuttings, and one thou is about the maximum cut you want to take with one of these cutters. Um, a, it keeps it in good condition to do the rest of them, and B, if you take any more, it'll probably distort the plates and bend them. Uh, you can hear it occasionally where it's got a full cut all the way around the profile. Uh, it really does push the metal. It bends it in the in the jig. Perhaps I should have, shouldn't have made it with so much overhang from the spigot inside here. But a lesson learned for the future. But for me, the main thing is it looks as though it's going to be a success. I'm, I'm really pleased with the way things have turned out. I don't know if anyone else has ever used the tormac as a shaper or a slotter but it certainly works. There, there we have the clutch centre actually in the fit. It's, uh, it's not tight, in fact I, I think that'll be fine once it's been pushed on and curious people have, you know, people push them on and off and so on, take them on and off. I think it'll round itself off and get into a nice work and fit on those splines. It, I mean it's a lovely fit that, that's great. I'm really pleased with, with that. That's quite a solution for the, the gentleman who put the parts to me. Anyway, I'll press on. I've only got about another six.